What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. It's Monday, back on the grind. Time to get back to the routine. What is going on in the markets today? So actually, we've gone slightly up since this morning. We did take a small dip. We're sitting at $274 billion market cap with Bitcoin at $6,800. Can we break that $7,000 psychological barrier? I'm not too sure. I sure hope so. If we have a look at what is going on, once again, we have Digibyte absolutely slaughtering the competition today. 17.28% up. Uh, Digibyte has had an incredible week. As you guys can see right here, uh, hold on one second. Over the past seven days, yeah, and the volume is increasing pretty pretty tremendously. Currently, it's on Bittrex if you're interested. We also have Monaco doing quite well. Also, probably has to do with the acquisition of Crypto.com. That was pretty impressive. Walton Chain, Paypex, Nulls, 8Shares, Arc, Dropple, and Mixin. And if we also have a look at Mainframe, which we've been keeping a close eye on, that is also up 12.59% as well, with volume increasing, and that is on Binance. Now, moving on, some good news. Finally, Ethereum holders can breathe a sign of relief as gas crisis is calming down. So finally, that whole debacle with the F coin and everything that was clogging the network with the fees, they're finally down, so we can finally send each other some cheap Ethereum once again. Also, interesting Ethereum news. So the co-founder of Google, Sergey Brin, actually reveals that he's been mining Ethereum with his son. Now, this is a guy who's worth $52 billion, which makes him the ninth richest person on the planet, okay? He also spoke at an event as well. This is them right here. And what he had to say was he was also pretty pro zero knowledge proofs. He called the potential of zero knowledge proofs really mind boggling. He said these proofs can be used to show that a transaction is accurate without revealing the transaction data to the nodes. This is one of the main privacy settings behind Zcash as opposed to Monero, which obfuscates transactions instead. Very interesting to hear that the ninth richest man in the world is mining Ethereum. So let's talk about more Bitcoin price predictions. I know, I know, right? We So yesterday or the day before, I forget when it was, we were talking about the $5 million Bitcoin, right? Now they're talking about the $100 million Bitcoin. I mean, I don't know about you guys, if we could just kind of get through that $7,000 Bitcoin mark, I'd be happy. But sure, let's talk about the $100 million Bitcoin. So hyper Bitcoinization is defined by Bitcoin commentator Obi Juan Kenobit as a theoretical state wherein Bitcoin displaces legacy currencies and becomes the dominant, if not only, method to exchange value. This is basically the same situation that we covered yesterday, and we came to an average of 5 million per Bitcoin, but they're saying 100. So essentially, hyper Bitcoinization believers argue that Bitcoin is, a superior, is superior to fiat currency, and the demonetization of fiat as Bitcoin rises to dominance is inevitable. This is because Bitcoin is non inflationary. So this is nothing new, guys. This is all stuff that we know. They go on to explain that Bitcoin gives power back to the people over money due to its centralization. Uh, no authority can stop it. Additionally, Bitcoin is borderless, breaking the current paradigm where citizens use their local government-backed fiat currencies. They say due to these advantages, hyper-Bitcoinization believers think that Bitcoin adoption will steadily grow and eventually it will cost people more money to reject Bitcoin than to accept Bitcoin. Interesting. So he... Obi-Wan Kenobit goes on to describe the evolution towards hyper-Bitcoinization in three phases. He breaks it down into equilibrium, nucleation, and crystallization, which is the same theory behind the growth of crystals. Equilibration equilibration i don't know there's so many anyway guys long story short if i'll drop a link to this uh you know it's just another price prediction i don't know so they're saying 100 million dollars per bitcoin like i said i don't know let's see if we could just get past seven thousand a digital currency in which transactions can be performed without the need for a central bank woody what is a bitcoin yes Moving on, we have a new 21-page excerpt entitled Duality, which has emerged recently. Oh, what could this be? So on June 29th, another anonymous specter arose, claiming to be the real Satoshi Nakamoto. You guys might remember this. And he released a lengthy teaser about Bitcoin's history and development, how he became involved with the cypherpunks, and how he will reveal his true identity in his new book. The truth is one that people will not come to expect because the truth is too special to give away. It requires a long answer, which will be in the book. So this Satoshi Nakamoto 
impersonator potentially says. The excerpt was posted on NakamotoFamilyFoundation.org, a new domain that caused a stir when it was purchased from Amazon's register earlier that week. Among the uh, cryptic clues and convoluted sentences, the writer does outline particular aspects of his Satoshi Nakamoto's life, including his earlier role as a university lab researcher and his place of residency somewhere along the east coast of the United States. So you do have some people a little bit skeptical right here. Uh, decentralized AF wrote, I read the duality paper published by Satoshi. It has really bad comma usage and convoluted sentences. It was probably not written by a genius nor someone whose first language in English. I'm going to go ahead and guess it's fake. Moving on to other news, guys. So I wanted to talk about this today. You guys know I love my ledger. I use ledger for everything. So they now have ledger live your accounts all in one place. It's really awesome. So you're going to be able to check your balances anytime, anywhere, manage your device, send, receive funds live from the app. So check that out, Ledger Live. I'm excited about that. Now, moving on to some coin news. The first one is a little bit of warning coming out of Bancor. So they say Bancor experienced a security breach this morning. No user wallets were compromised. To complete the investigation, we have moved to maintenance and we will be releasing a more detailed report shortly. We look forward to being back on online as soon as possible and let's see if I refresh the page I don't know if there's any updates so currently there are no updates on Bancor but that is the situation at the time also I want to talk about Huobi opening a crypto to fiat trading pair in Australia they will be starting with Bitcoin Bitcoin Cash Litecoin Ethereum and Ethereum Classic so congratulations to all of my Australian friends out there lucky you guys you're gonna have that direct gateway right into the exchange that's pretty awesome also check this out so coming from iota they basically have this switch that you can turn on or off electronics essentially just by uh, when it receives a small payment from the trinity wallet so that's some news out of iota okay also we do have the v chain announcement of their mobile wallet as well so you can check that out we also have a partnership between Switchio and O3 Labs, the wallet. So as you guys know, O3 is essentially just the mobile version for the Neo ecosystem Net5 wallet. I also wanted to note that at this current point in time, Switchio currently lists 19 Net5 tokens and is focused on delivering an intuitive trading experience with minimal fees without compromising the benefits of having complete control and custody of users' funds at all times through a trustless and decentralized trading environment. It aims to become the first cross-chain decentralized exchange and plans to support Qtum, Ethereum, and potentially Zilliqa and EOS tokens in the future. So that's really awesome news as well. Although I will say I do wish that they would, I, I wish that liquidity would increase a little bit on these decentralized exchanges. It makes it really difficult to move large quantities, but you know, it's a start. Also, I wanted to talk about SpotCoin in the Neo universe, so they dropped this article. Uh, some people have been asking, what is the purpose of SpotCoin? What does it do? How is it related to the Neo smart economy? So essentially, they broke it down right here. There's kind of a visualization. You could see that it establishes the um, OTC building automated digital currencies exchange, which will be between payments. So you'll have them working with potentially Trinity. You could have, um, you know, Gaga Pay, Aphelion Next and Switchio, all utilizing SpotCoin in the center. I will drop a link to this in the description. One more thing coming out of the NEO ecosystem is the Bitpaction warning. They say multiple NEO ecosystem projects are urging users to withdraw their funds from Bitpaction exchange after increasing red flags and no communication from the Bitpaction team leadership. Bitpaction currently lists multiple NEP5 tokens, including Master Contract, Bridge, Orbis, Narrative, Travala, and uh, NEO's version of Loopring. Now, it was, it was first notice from master contract token they had a tweet they were saying that the admins have been inactive for three days um, on their telegram and their twitter has gone silent withdrawals reportedly only work for bitcoin um, and then they originally had no no ex no withdrawal fees for neo then they uploaded it to or they they changed it to 0.5 approximately 20 us dollars so, yeah, they're just basically saying just keep an eye out on Bitpaction. If you guys are using the exchange, I don't know. This is directly from NEO, so they're just kind of saying just be careful. A lot of concerns over that exchange. In other news, we do have 
Elasto. So the Canadian China Film and Television Culture Association, the Canadian Multicultural Promotion Association, the GSBS Chain Help Blockchain Solution, and Elastos, as well as We Film Chain Deep Strategic Cooperation Press Conference was successfully held at Vancouver's Van City Theater. So that is the partnership between Elastos and We Film Chain. There is a lot, a lot of pictures, a lot of stuff you can read in this article. I'm not going to go all into it. I'll drop it into the description but that's really good as well. Moving on, I wanted to talk about Me Vote and also these guys, Orange Generation. So they're announcing a national blockchain vote on gun policy scheduled for October. So what's the big deal about this? Well, the cool thing is that they're going to be using Horizon State to make the voting, voting on the blockchain. Excellent use case. Just like to point that out. Also, guys, I I just wanted to tell you, I was visiting Zillica. Did you guys notice that they updated their website? I was having a look. So check this out. Like, they've actually revamped it. It looks really nice. Um, yeah, so Zillica, they have a new website. That's cool. So moving on, let's talk about some news. So you have 1 million computers that got hacked to mine $2 million worth of crypto. So it was a mining malware that infected a million computers in China. So this reportedly earned the hackers $2 million over the course of two years. So for various purposes, such as enhanced browsing speed, they deployed these plugins, which were shown in display ads that reached 5 million computers in the country. So what would happen is by clicking on the display ad and installing the plugin, over a million computers were subsequently infected, mining a total of 26 million Digibyte. Hey, there's our old buddy Digibyte. Decred and Sia coin tokens over the course of two years, according to the police. The report also indicated that the hackers developed a network of more than 100 agents to help them propagate the illicit mining software, um, such as through working relationships with internet cafes. And obviously, the reason that they chose to do these smaller cryptos was basically so that it would allow the back end mining process to be a lot quieter and less likely to be spotted for victims. So you always got to be careful. You know, you had Pirate Bay. <clears throat> they were mining, I think it was Monero or something in the background, right, when you were on their website. So there's all these different ways that people are able to hack and mine and do all this stuff using all It's crazy, guys. It's crazy. So you got to be careful. Also, in other news, let's talk about the ETFs. The ETFs are what everybody's talking about, right? ETFs, they're going to save crypto. So you have the United States receiving another application from CBOE Global Markets. Other applications have unfortunately not been approved, but a Bitcoin ETF appears to have a better chance of success, right? So many of these rejections have occurred as a result of an unregulated market, but the SEC has recently made clarifications. These changes show that Bitcoin and Ethereum are not considered securities. You guys remember that? It was like everyone was celebrating, right, when, when Ethereum was not a security. So basically, this gives potential for that Bitcoin ETF to come into effect as well as this Ethereum ETF to come into effect. This could be huge. This could be the catalyst that we're actually waiting for. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to Delaware because the state Delaware has awarded IBM $738,000 to create a blueprint for their blockchain-based corporate filing system. So currently, one of the projects that the state will use blockchain for is adding all of the state's public archives to a blockchain for easy public ask access and to secure the records. There you go. That's a great use for a public ledger, guys. So congratulations, Delaware. Uh, yeah. Congratulations, Delaware. <laughs> I don't know. So let's talk about Switzerland looking to include a cryptocurrency offering on the Swiss Stock Exchange. This is huge, massive news, guys. Swiss Stock Exchange and the company behind it, which is SIX, S-I-X, is looking to build out a new infrastructure that will be able to support Bitcoin at first, but additional cryptocurrencies later as well. The only thing in question, though, is how the Swiss Financial Market uh, Supervisory Authority or the FINMA, essentially, will react to these new developments. So Switzerland has been known to support blockchain-related businesses, but this would need a lot more official paperwork as potential crypto stock exchange would need to hit very high standards in terms of security and anti-money laundering. But still, man, adding crypto to the Swiss stock exchange, that would be freaking huge and massive, and I would love to see that. Let's talk about my good old buddy, William Shatner. So this is kind of funny. So basically, William Shatner is not giving away Ether. 
<laughs> so he had, a, so there were, you know, he basically said, by the way, another fake me pushing a pump and dump crypto Ponzi scheme. So it was William Shatner with two I's and an S at the end of the name. The fake tweet promoted a website called etherpromotion.org, which promised visitors who sent them between 0.5 to 20 ether in order to confirm their address would receive 10 times the amount back, guys. Holy crap. So if I give you one ether, I get 10 back? Wow, this totally doesn't sound like a scam. So don't forget, he was also the spokesman for the Canadian alternative energy company called Solar Alliance, which is building what they describe as the first solar-powered cryptocurrency mining facility. When speaking on the project, Shatner did describe his understanding or lack of blockchain technology and Bitcoin in a very Kirkian way, saying, you have to blank your mind and say, what is blockchain again? How does mining operate again? The concepts are really strange, and yet when you begin to grasp it, it all makes sense. Sorry, guys, that's my best Kirker. It's my best uh, Captain Kirk you're going to get. So that being said, guys, before we go, I want to leave you with a little bit of ancient Chinese proverb. Not exactly, but just remember, guys, in investing, always remember that Rome was not built in a day. In trading, always remember that Hiroshima and Nagasaki were destroyed in a day. Okay? You guys kind of get it right there? So, okay, a little intense, kind of like intense with the, with the references there, but... Just take that with a grain of salt, guys. Before we go, friendly reminder, tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be doing a live AMA with Veet. I know I've been talking about it a lot. You're probably wondering why. Well, all I can say is maybe you should show up for the live stream, and you'll see why I've been suggesting that you guys show up. Not going to say anything, but yeah. This was, okay, no, just kidding, guys. You should definitely come check it out. Okay, so that being said, guys, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. You guys are awesome. It's Monday. Let's go. Let's get it. Markets aren't too bad right now, guys. So, yeah. Let's go. I'm ready to do it again, guys. Also, got to say shout out to everyone that's been subscribing. Love you guys. Everyone that's been smashing on the like button, joining my Telegram group below. I love to see new faces, hear what you guys have to say. Join the Crypto Zombies community. Yeah. That being said, my name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.